And before I get too far into this, um, I, w I want to say uh, uh, two things. Number one, stuff happens. Okay. So we talk about uh, a lot and we do practices to recognize that we are spiritual beings, that we are whole, complete, and perfect no matter what is going on. We also do our meditation and, uh, and our affirmations and our spiritual mind treatment, spiritualizing, spiritualizing our whole being so that, <clears throat> so that we have the space, that we have the capacity within us to show up from that place of our spiritual divinity in the face of situations and circumstances that will invariably happen for all of us. And so as I was working on this message, there was a point in time where it became apparent to me that this could be a message about loss and grief and, and grieving. But that's not going to be the message. Today, I had, just had to make a decision about that. This is going to be about empowerment. And we can't talk about being empowered without talking about and having a greater understanding of power itself. It's, it's an energy. It is an aspect of ourselves that I know in my own journey that I had to completely turn around my own understanding of what it meant to have power and to use it. Because I had been subject to a lot of other power that was destructive. Right? So I had to learn what does it mean to be powerful from, from a spiritual place. And please know that no matter what it is that, that I say, that it does not, from a spiritual viewpoint, it, that it does not invalidate in any way, shape, or form the, the suffering that we, go, that we invariably go through in, in loss. You know, and, and when we know that just with the campfire situation that we're surrounded in and with that um, that the loss of that and the effect of that is huge. It has great magnitude in in people's lives, and we also know that where our focus goes, the energy flows, and so whatever it is that is happening in our lives, what, whatever our challenges are, and some of the things that I just think about, well, fire and loss of home, okay, you know, but death of loved ones, a parent losing a child. Oh. Um, I, I have a minister friend, uh, he's somewhere else now, but in Colorado, well, his brother went on a hike and just disappeared. Never, to my knowledge, a couple years later, had not been found. And they just had to deal with that. Uh, not hearing from a child. You know, I mean, there are really, really huge things that we deal with. And yet. When you go looking and listening for people's stories about 
how they coped and what they chose to focus on and to, and to believe in. And when I look at my own life, I know without a doubt that just because of who we are, spiritual beings, that the way to move through terrible experiences or loss of any kind is already within us. It's embedded in our own being. And that the way that we activate that is by priming the pump with where we're putting our focus and what we're surrounding ourselves with. Now, the other part of, of this, this topic that, um, that we're choosing to participate in with Centers for Spiritual Living is protecting the vulnerable. Now, I know that when I'm grounded in my power, that I really have something then to give to those, <clears throat> to those who are vulnerable. Do you, do you find that within yourself? Yeah. But when, when I'm scattered, when my, my focus is when I'm allowing my focus to go to a problem and the what's so terrible about it, and even before I know it, my mind is thinking, is making up stories about what could happen when it hasn't even happened. And that's the nature of fear and concern. And we don't even realize because a lot of it is unconscious. So we don't realize that we're doing it. We think we're problem solving. We think because we're putting our focus on it, and thinking about what might happen, that we're going to be better prepared. Uh-uh. Do you agree? So what happens when you focus on the problem? What do, what do you experience in yourself? Can you uh, identify some feelings? Pain. Yes. Anxiety. Mm-hmm. Frustration, yeah, that's a really good one. Oh. Yes. And how many of you did not really even realize that you were so worried about something until you lay down to go to sleep? <laughs> or you sleep a couple hours and you wake up and then it's like, and what is it about the middle of the night that it takes on all new proportions? And the other thing that I've asked myself is why sometimes do, during the middle of the night, don't I, why do I not even remember what my practices are? It's even more difficult in the middle of the night. No, I'm just going to lay here and think about it. And I go, no, the, the one thing I do remember to do is begin to treat. And so I'll think it or I'll say some affirmative statement. And I'm lucky if I get two sentences out and then I'm right back to the problem. There's an answer. How do you feel when you are empowered? Confident, calm, energized, yeah. Energized with, oh, yes. Clarity and enthusiasm and love, was that? With love and resolution, yes. And sometimes simply just the clarity um, it is just letting go. 
Uh, Johnny, uh, for the, how many of you were here for Johnny's meditation? Yeah, I, uh, if I start talking about that, I'll lose half of my message. So I'm not going to. But it was, it was really powerful what she shared with us that she was faced with this week and, and the concepts that she used about bringing herself back into the moment and asking the right questions. What is it that I know right now? And that's such a powerful question because it gives the mind something to focus on. So you guys are all in a great place and out there in our live stream audience, I know that you guys are all in a great place. But I have a rhetorical question. What if your ability to navigate your life from a place of spiritual realization was increased by 10%? Now take a moment to think about the answer of this, what comes up for you. If your ability was increased by 10%, what would you be doing what would be different that isn't now? And in light of your own answer, would you find that you're more courageous? Would your life be better? Okay. Would you feel empowered? Would you? A lot of the things that you've already said on the affirmative side of how you would feel, that is empowered. If you're courageous, you're empowered. Would it be easy to make that change? Maybe. Maybe you can't answer because you don't know. Because you haven't taken that step or that decision or made that commitment to that next thing. So what I'm putting out there into the energy soup is what I'm knowing is that today something shifts and that you actually are ready. The fact that it came to your mind, that's that divine wisdom and guidance. When I was thinking about this talk, uh, actually it was in yoga class, but I was thinking about the talk. And of course you're not supposed to be thinking in yoga, but it's a practice, right? Because stuff comes and then you go, well, okay, what am I going to, is this a thought I'm going to entertain? But I uh, wonder if some of you remember this song, and I don't sing anymore, but <clears throat> I love myself the way I am, and still I want to grow. I'll always be the perfect me, and deep inside I know I'm beautiful and capable of being the best me I can. I love myself just the way I am. I know. So in yoga class, I had to say thank you for, for the reminder because I was thinking about a problem. And what came to me was, I love myself the way I am. And still I want to grow. Loving myself the way that I am, recognizing that I'm a powerful being right now, looking at all of the things that are going right in my life, and there are so many of them. I have a lot to be grateful for. And a lot of those things, when I really think about them, you know, it's kind of like you plant a seed. And Dr. Holmes talks about this analogy over and over and over again. The, the oak tree, the seed, one tiny little seed. 
and what grows in the oak tree. Now, in, in my backyard, it's the um, big trees. They're taking over. They are growing so fast. They are producing so many figs. I mean, sometimes I imagine that I had a dream that when I walked out into my backyard, uh, the very next day I couldn't see any sky. The fig trees were just, you know, and they have these things that wind around. But anyway, nature is prolific. And so I look at my life and when I compare my own decision to set something new in motion, in my life and to make little changes. Oh, wow. The, the, what I got back was a hundredfold. And you know, it's the same thing, it's the same thing with our money. But it's the consciousness that we do it with. And as Reverend Kathy said last week, we start where we are. Now, I'm kind of a visionary, and when I was new to Science of Mind, I started to get this, I, you know, the idea of how this works. I had a whole lot of bigger-than-life ideas about what I wanted my, my life to look like. Well, I was quickly disappointed and felt anything other than empowered until I was reminded that those ideas are there. I don't need to take them on the, off the shelf, but the way that I move toward embodying those ideas and becoming those ideas, because, I mean, really, that idea came out of my consciousness. Actually, there's only one mind, so it came from one mind. But I, this individualized spirit, I accepted it. So I left it on the shelf, and then I asked myself, if I'm going to start right here and right now, what is my inner guidance? Tell me. What are the practices? What are the principles? Order, balance, freedom. In order to have freedom, in order to have expansion in my life, I've got to put things in order. So I want to share with you today, I did share with you, y'all get one of these? Okay, all right. So while these are coming around, you'll all of a sudden find one in your hand. This is Zen Things, Eight Rules to Live By. And before we go into that, I want to share with you a little story that, um, and, and this is really an example of, of the practice. I came across an article in the Lotus Guide, and maybe some of you saw this. It's, um, I don't think it's brand new. But um, this was written... Let's see, I've forgotten his name. I think it's Doug Newsom. But anyway, um, this gentleman and his brother started a radio station, BSS. And he starts the article out like this. And this is, this is a few days shortly after November 8th, the day of the fire, Paradise Resident. I am so overwhelmingly grateful since that fatal day of November 8th. The day my family lost everything in, the paradise, in paradise due to the campfire. The day my twin brother, his wife, and four teenagers and I lost our home, our business, our possessions. We don't even have pictures of our parents to share anymore. And I can't stop saying thank you. Every day is a miracle. Every single day is a miracle since the tragedy struck. Last year, 
the year before, he wrote in the Lotus Guide about starting this radio station, BBS. And he tells the story that shortly before the fire, that because it was the right thing to do, because he and his brothers are visionaries, that they installed this um, major solar system and did a lot of improvements. It was an achievement, he says, along with others that were completed just weeks and months before the fire. And it had taken a lifetime to come to that place of accomplishment. BBS Network was, in, was at the apex of the industry and well situated to grow into the foreseeable future. We were excited. A lifetime in work of dreams and work were emerging. The tragedy struck and we may never reach that again, he thought that day. Now what I found interesting about this is that he talks about this was not the first loss in their lives. That actually there had been two or three times before that they had gone through situations where they lost their possessions. He didn't go into detail what that was. But what he said was that after the last event, he basically made a statement of empowerment, which was no more and asked the right question, what is going on here? And so it, he said that it was about a two year period that he began a practice of introspection, of meditation, of stillness and silence and asking the questions. He wasn't quite sure what had changed. He and his brother, he says, are workaholics, and so they got busy in the process of creating this radio station and doing the things that they love and establishing a home in paradise. And tragedy struck. Within a very short time after the fire, his, his most, his greatest competition started a fundraising project to help them to replace everything. His competition. He said in the beginning, the hardest thing that he had to do, first of all, was to put out that they needed help, to ask, to be vulnerable. See, this is about protecting the vulnerable. We want to protect the vulnerable in an ego way. But when we know that vulnerability is actually our strength, then we can come, come forward from that place and we can ask for help. We can ask for what we need. Because the universe gives by means of the people and the resources that are around us. So I want to ask you to ask yourself in regard to this one thing in your mind that if there was 10% improvement, what would be better? I want to ask you to ask yourself the good question. Is there somewhere to ask for help? Is there a place or a way that I'm not asking for support? Is there a way in myself that I'm actually hiding my need out of any kind of fear or shame or an idea that I should be doing it by myself. And that is information that will set you on the path.
of empowerment. And so back to our little sheet here. This is something that I'm sharing with you because about two weeks ago, I started taking these simple eight things very seriously in my life. And I'm one of those people that is kind of an organic worker. And so like I'll start a project and it can't be finished and I'll have notes about it and so I'll have a pile about it. And I can't put it away out of sight, out of mind. And so I have a pile here. And then I go over and, well, I can't work there. So I go over here and I start my next little thing over here. And then I have the pile of, well, you get the picture, right? And, and then there's the list that I make for myself every day of things that I want to accomplish. So I started noticing the way that I am doing things is causing me a certain amount of stress. So I, here is this very simple concept. Do one thing at a time. OK. So I've been doing that. Do one thing at a time. Here's what I notice. First and foremost, giving myself permission to do one thing at a time, my mind just all of a sudden calmed down. It took a whole lot of things off my plate because I didn't know when I was going to get to them. And then it said, do it slowly and deliberately. And so I started doing that. And I chose a pile that I wanted to clean up slowly and deliberately. And so I picked up each thing and I slowly and deliberately looked at it and asked myself, why is it here? What was it that was important about that? Or, you know, whatever it is that my curiosity wanted to know. And what was I hoping that was going to happen about this thing? And then I knew clearly and deliberately what I wanted to do with it. And most of the time it was in the trash. And then number three says, do it completely, whatever it is that you're doing. Do it completely. Well, actually, all those three things go together. And so I started to find that I no longer needed a list. Now, I still might have lists. But to do something completely and to give myself permission to do less and then to put space, number five, in between things, I did something very unique. And when I finished something, I went and sat down for a minute. I used that time. I created a ritual. I used that time to sit down, even if it was for only one minute to get centered, acknowledge myself for what I had done, feel the, the empowerment of it, and then ask myself, what's the next thing to do? And what I found at the end of the day was this really powerful, clear sense of accomplishment and peacefulness, and that I still had energy, that I wasn't all worn out, and that it all went back to the one thing of do one thing at a time. So I invite you to take this with you and to use it in, in any way that, that you want to use it. I think it would be a great little thing for some friends to um, get together and talk about, like to take the list and then check in um, 
with each other once in a while and see how that's working. I might do that. It's a good idea. So in closing, I want to share with you from the Science of Mind textbook, the glossary, the definition that Holmes wrote, Dr. Holmes wrote about power. Power. The energy by which everything lives. The creative medium of spirit is the great mental law of the universe. The universal law of mind that says yes. It is the one medium through which all law and all power operate. A man's creative power is marvelous. For every time he or she thinks, she sets the law in motion. As her thought sets the law in motion, she is specializing this universal power for some definite purpose. It's pretty hard to do that if we're all scattered and not simplifying our lives. This should give to all a sense of freedom and a realization that there is neither com competition or monopoly. Our radio brothers found out competition is really about connection. It leaves each to work out her own salvation, not with fear and trembling, but with a calm sense of peace and assurance. Humanity may transmute as much of the infin infinite energy into degrees of power as she chooses to use mentally, spiritually, it demonstrates for other, for every ways, including physical healings. The practitioner knows, and that is all of you, we are all practitioners. The practitioner knows within herself or himself the truth about the situation, the truth about the self, the truth about the other. And that self-knowingness rises into the consciousness of the individual. We, through spiritual practice, don't treat patients as patients or clients as clients. We treat them as empowered spiritual beings that are imbued with this that it's waiting to be activated by the power of our conscious thought and direction for good. This person realizes that each is born of spirit and not of matter, not of circumstance, not of conditions. Spirit is changeless, perfect and complete. When one realizes this, and sees all life in this way, looks through the circumstances and sees the truth, perfection begins to show up. You are the power. Slowing ourselves down to be in the present moment, to simplify our lives, is the way, is the practice to embody that power. We don't have to go anywhere. Nowhere. Just sometimes the place that we have the hardest time going. Back to ourselves. Blessings on your journey. So it is.